Today you're going to learn multiple ways to visually represent the energy transfers that occur during a chemical reaction. We're going to look at both endothermic and exothermic reactions, and you want to pay attention to how the pictorial, we've got several pictorial representations, and how they're different for endothermic versus exothermic. This first example that we're going to look at says energy must be added to decompose calcium carbonate into calcium oxide and carbon monoxide. First thing is because energy must be added, we're going to think about energy as if it is a reactant. So I'm going to write energy on the reactant side of my equation, energy. And that is going to be true for any endothermic reaction where energy is coming into the system. Next I'm going to look at my bar charts. And um, I'm always in these double bar charts here again for chemical reactions. We're going to start out with reactants and end with products in our system. So the first system will show reactants inside of it, the second products. I'm always just going to pick an arbitrary amount of thermal and chemical energy to start out with. They can be equal, they cannot be equal. What's going to be important is whether those bars from beginning to end get bigger or smaller, not the amount that you actually start with. So for this one, I'm going to start with um, three bars of thermal energy and two bars of chemical energy. Again, doesn't matter how many I choose. And when I look at this reaction, um, or with this description of the process, it says energy must be added in order for the reaction to happen. So that when I read that, it makes me think I've got to add energy to the system before a collision, a particle collision, can happen to make the reaction take place. So I am going to first show energy being added to the system in the form of heating. So I'm going to put a Q here because energy is only going to go in and out of my system in the form of heat. So I put two bars of energy in. That means after this reaction, or sorry, after the energy is added, my thermal bars are up to five. Because three plus the two energy bars that are added gives me five. Again, if you picked a different number, that's okay. You just have to make sure that relationship is true. And chemical energy has not changed yet because the reaction hasn't happened yet. And I've added a written reminder of what I was just saying. Next, the reaction is going to have to take place. So I'm going to use an arrow here to show that a collision just happened and thermal the particles are moving quickly. That thermal energy gets transferred into chemical energy. So. And we're always going to equilibrate back to the original amount of thermal energy. So I started with three bars of thermal energy. I want to have the same amount at the end. So those two bars that were originally added in as thermal energy to the system now are going to be added to my chemical energy. So I end up with four bars of chemical energy at the end. So another, again, a collision took place and that caused particles to rearrange, which is what a react chemical reaction is. And the thermal energy that was put into the system was transferred to chemical energy, giving me more chemical energy at the end than I had at the beginning. So, so let's review the different ways that we can see from this, picture, this slide that this is an endothermic reaction. In the problem description, energy must be added. In the chemical equation, energy is shown as a reactant. In our bar graph representation, energy is entering my system, and the amount of chemical energy at the beginning is less than the amount of chemical energy at the end in the products. So an endothermic reaction is when energy enters a system because energy is entering the system, energy is leaving the surroundings, so the surroundings will actually feel cooler. We recognize this also as an endothermic reaction because energy is a product, and in this energy versus time graph, the products have more energy than the reactants because energy was added to the system. Now we'll look at an example of the other type of reaction, an exothermic reaction. Here it says methane is burned in air, it forms carbon dioxide and water vapor, and it heats the surroundings. So energy is going to be a product this time, and it's going to be leaving the system. 
but that energy can't leave until after the reaction happens because the reaction is what's actually releasing this energy. So this time again, starting with an arbitrary number of bars, um, let's do two thermal and three chemical just to be different than last time. Again, the important thing is the change, the difference between the um, energy at the beginning and the end, not the actual absolute amount. So here, in the exothermic reaction, the, the um, reaction can't release energy until the reactions happen. So in an exothermic reaction, the step where energy leaves the system is always going to happen second. First, we will begin with that collision where um, the reaction happens and some of the chemical energy is transferred into thermal energy. So um, I'll make thermal energy up to 4 and because chemicals started at 2 and or sorry at 3 bars and lost 2 bars to thermal energy and has 1 bar of energy left. So now that the reaction has taken place there's this extra thermal energy and the system is going to try to get back to the two bars of thermal energy that it started with. So right now there are two extra bars of thermal energy compared to the beginning. So that energy is going to leave the system in the form of heat. And the system will end with one bar of chemical energy and two bars of thermal energy. So let's review all the ways that in this representation we can tell this is an exothermic reaction. We can tell it's exothermic because energy is a product, because in the description of the problem it says that the reaction causes the surroundings to heat up. We can tell because the chemical energy of the reactants is more or greater than the chemical energy of the products. And finally, we can tell because in our arrow, energy is leaving the system. So when the system had a total of five bars of energy at the beginning, it only has three bars of energy at the end. The last representation we have to show energy is this energy versus time graph. And so again, to review, um, an exothermic reaction is going to have energy as a product because energy is leaving the system, the reactants have more energy and the products have less because the energy has gone down as the reaction happens. Exothermic means the energy exits the system and the surroundings are actually going to feel warmer because the energy that left the system went to the surroundings. So you should feel comfortable representing um, endothermic and exothermic reactions using this energy versus time graph using a bar graph by writing energy on either the product or reactant side of the um, reaction and finally by talking about how the surroundings will feel in the presence of an endo or exothermic reaction.